Hi, I'm Richard, and my students have an 85% success rate of getting into Global Master Management and LSE Masters in Management. That is 12 times the average acceptance rate, which is just 7%. And today, for the first time, we are going to go through two of our 28 insider tips that help give our clients an advantage when applying to these courses. Now, tip number one is to think strategically about which master's course to apply to. There are nine different management courses at LSE, and the lowest success rate is the core course at just 7% in LSE Masters in Management. You can increase that to 16% if you apply for the two-year Global Masters in Management. Now, it does require a GMAT, as does the management course for all non-UK students, but it is two and a half times more likely to get you in. So if you're considering a, doing a two-year course with an opportunity to an MBA exchange term in America or travel to one of 200 fantastic universities around the world, this could be a great way to increase your chances. Within the GMAT, you can also go up to a 9% chance by looking at LSE Economics and Management and LSE Management and Strategy, which is one of the best, best courses in the world if you want to be a management or strategic consultant. They do require first class and a quantitative degree, but if you have good mathematical skills, you will stand out as a more competitive applicant, again, giving you an advantage. Now, if you're looking to avoid taking the GMAT, there are four more courses. LSE offers a marketing course, an HR course, an information systems and digital innovation, and a social innovation masters. Each of these has a unique flavor and goes from 9% at the bottom all the way up to 17% for HR and organizational systems. So work out what you want to do with your management degree and you can massively increase your chances just by avoiding the core course, which only has that 7%. Now, tip number two is a long track record of mathematics. Whilst mathematics is not a requirement for many of these courses, it will always give you an advantage. If you have a strong quantitative degree or a first class, that isn't enough. You want to go through and get the individual quantitative modules. Have you got a 90% in a calculus or a differential equations? Have you got a 4.0 GPA in a quantitative course? Put those in your CV as highlighted modules. Mention them as an aptitude to maths. You can go further. Another top tip is to do external courses. MIT, University of Pennsylvania, Coursera all offer free MOOCs, which can give you accredited courses, for example, 90% in introduction to financial quantitative calculus. This gives you a huge advantage over the other candidates because you can prove that you've gone above and beyond to show a mathematical aptitude. Now, if you don't have a mathematical course or quantitative background, I would still recommend investing in an additional mathematics course or read around the subject, go to a public lecture. It will always give you an advantage. Now, that's just two of the 28 tips that we have for LSE management. If you want to work with an expert consultant such as myself or one of my brilliant team to increase your chance of success to 85%, contact us using the information on screen now or in the description below. Now, there are five pillars of a personal statement that you must always include. Number one is motivation. And for management students, I encourage you to think of a big mission statement. What is a global problem that you can help be part of the solution to? And how can you use your degree to achieve that? Another very important pillar, which must always be included, is a five-year career plan. And be specific. Most people applying to this course will say, I want to be a consultant at McKinsey. In fact, of the 1,700 applicants, more than half will use that line. So go further. Talk about being, for example, a transformation consultant helping BCG in the MENA region to develop small SMEs. If you don't have a specific job, a specific career plan, go and research one because that will give you an advantage and a competitive edge over other competitors who don't. So that's what you're going to do immediately after graduation. Within the first two years, how will you be promoted? And I like to push it to five years. Is there a specific desk at a specific company that you'd like to be running, managing, maybe even pushing for partner? Make it ambitious, make it realistic.
Now, the other three pillars that you want to cover are work experience, really important that you talk about the successes that you and your team have had. It doesn't matter if you might have had a relatively junior role, talk about the multi-million pound deal that your team helped with. Talk about the impressive people that you shadowed and what you learned. Now, for more tips on these pillars, we'll also link five pillars and tips of a personal statement video. Our final two tips and pillars for all statements are university research. At master's level, unlike undergraduate level, you can specifically apply to LSE. This means that you can go as far as mentioning individual core modules, picking your electives, name dropping a lecturer and their research, talking about societies and additional projects and public lectures. The more you make this tailored to LSE, the more the admissions person believes you have really researched this course and how it aligns to your goals, the more likely you are to get in. And our final pillar, probably the most important for management, is to show that you actually have subject knowledge of management. It is not the same to say that I have experience managing someone in the local bar where I worked to make some money during university. No, management as an academic discipline involves procurement, involves organizational behavior, motivational theory. If you don't know what these things are, I strongly recommend you watch some other YouTube videos, read around the subjects, and demonstrate advanced topics within management to convince LSE that you've really thought and understood what this is. So those are our two tips and five general pillars as to how to stand out for LSE Masters in Management. And I strongly recommend you to consider the other courses, particularly that two-year wonderful opportunity to do a global Masters in Management. Now, a course I really highly recommend is the two-year global Masters in Management at LSE. This gives you this amazing flexibility. You can stay at LSE for two years, or you can do an exchange term with an MBA student at top business schools in New York and America, which gives you a huge CV boost. You can even pick one of 36 leading business schools around the world and get a second degree certificate. That means you have two MSCs on your CV upon graduating. More importantly, perhaps, it is the course that has the highest feedback of the students I have sent all around the world, as they've had fantastic opportunities to do more courses, including to travel to Shanghai, America, I think one's been to Yale, and even San Paolo. Strategically, I must also mention, it is a 16% success rate. That gives you two and a half times the chances of getting into this unique course than the core management. So strategically, that's my number one pick. If you want to work with myself or other professionals to 12 times your chance of getting in, please do contact us using the details below. You can also see an exemplar personal statement by subscribing to our email below and we'll send you over a few other tips and choice blogs and videos to help you along your way. And lastly, please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. We try to get back to as many comments as we can to help as many people as we can. Most importantly, good luck with your application.